Hey guys, it's Isu with Journey to Programming. In this tutorial, I want to show you guys how to use link lists in C Sharp. And before I do, I want to see if you guys can make sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please do leave it in the comment section down below. Let's jump right in and let's make this pretty fast. So the first thing I want to show you how to do is how do you create a link list from scratch if you really just need to do it quickly, right? So the first thing you would do is you'd need to make a node class. So the way a link list works is it's a series of linked nodes. Each node contains a piece of data and a link to another node. That's why they're called linked lists. So if you want to think about it in a visual format, think about it like this. Each one of these squared brackets is a node, okay? So now each node contains a piece of data. So node A, right underneath it, contains a piece of data, which is a number, five, all right? Node B contains a piece of data, number nine, and node C contains a piece of data, 10. Now, they contain, each node contains a piece of data and then a link or a reference to a node, another node, okay? Only one in this case. In this example, we're gonna show you how to make a single link list. So node A has a piece of data, which is five, and then it also contains a reference to the next node, which is B. All right, B has a piece of data, which is nine, and it has a reference or a link to the next node, which is C. Oop, creating little visualizations in Visual Studio. That's beautiful, isn't it? Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see us more clearly. And C has a piece of data, which is 10, and it has a reference currently to nothing. So it actually has a link or a reference to null right now. And this is why it's actually called a link list. So a link list has a node at its root, which is A, and then that node points to either null, if it has only one node, or it points to the next node. The last node in the list, which in this case is C, always points to null. So if you want to visualize this first line, you could say A points to B, B points to C, and C points to null. Okay, and let me just space this out to clar clarify it up again, or clear it up. So our node A has a piece of data five and a reference to the next node which creates our linked list. B has nine and a reference to the next node, C. It's continuing our list. And then C has a piece of data, but there's no other node behind in or behind it in this list, so it points to null. If we insert a new node, what we can do is we can insert it in the front, which is really fast. All we do is we create a new node, and we'd say, let's say new node N, now points to what used to be the front of the list or the first node in the list and it contains its own data which is zero and it's pointing now to A. All right, so if this seems a little complex, uh, hopefully the code will simplify it right here. So let's jump into actually creating this linked list, all right? So let's make a class in here um, and let's call it link list node. Okay. And what this is going to contain is let's, let's just use an integer for its data. Let's say public int data. And then let's say a public linked list node as its reference so that we have, we keep that link going. And then what I'm going to do, oops, let's call this next. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a constructor in here, uh, which is going to public link list node. 
And this is going to take in an integer so we can go ahead and set it when somebody creates this new node. So we're gonna say data is equal to X and next is actually going to automatically allocate to null every time you create the node. So this is all you need to create a really simple link list structure, okay? This is just a node, and the reason we only need a node is because the first node in the series is the connection to the rest of the list. And that's just how it works. If you don't know how the structure overall fits, hopefully my, visual, my visualization helped. There are a lot of other samples out there and books which you guys can look at other visualizations. But let's look at the code now in our main method so you guys can visualize it with some code. So let's look at using our linked list node and actually creating this linked list structure, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm actually going to create a linked list class just for our sake. And I'm gonna make that linked list. And within it, I'm going to contain a linked list node, which is going to be called head. The reason for that is I want to have, whenever I create a linked list, some way of referencing the beginning of that linked list. And without this head reference, we're going to be kind of lost if we ever need to re-access the list. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create some sort of method that allows me to add new nodes into my linked list. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a public void add node. And this add node method is just going to add the node at the front of our list. In a single linked list, we are always gonna be adding to the front of the list. We can create a method that adds to the end or adds within the middle or anywhere within the linked list. But in this case, in this quick implementation, we're just gonna make an add node and it's only gonna add to the front. So uh, I'm gonna make it add node to front just to clarify that, all right? What I'm gonna allow this to do is I'm gonna allow somebody to say, I'm gonna add a node to the front. I'm just gonna pass in the data I wanna put there. So let's go ahead and say new, or let's just say data here. And what we're going to do is anytime somebody adds a new node, we're gonna go ahead and create our new nodes. We're gonna say linked list new node, new, or let's just say node, ah, node is equal to a new linked list node with data as its input to its constructor, okay? So that's gonna give us a new node here. And all we're gonna to do to add it to the front of our, our linked list is we're gonna say node.next is equal to head. So now our new node sits in front. So our old node's here, our new node comes and sits in front of the old one, and now it points to the old one. The old one points to null. If we had an empty linked list, our head reference is just gonna be null. And that means when we actually add this in, our new node is just going to point to null, which is perfectly fine. So uh, the one thing I did not do here, which I do need to, is I need to make sure that our linked list reference to he the head node is null when you first create your linked list. So I'm actually just gonna create a public linked list constructor, and I'm just gonna say head is equal to null anytime you create a new linked list. The reason I'm using a constructor is you may also want to keep a little bit of other data. For example, you may want to keep a counter of how much data is in your linked list. So what I can do is in my constructor, I can allocate that to zero, initialize my count to zero. Then every time we add a node, we can go ahead and increment our count. Now, I didn't finish my add node to the front. The last thing we need to do is we need to tell the head pointer to point at our new node because our new node has been inserted in the front. We've told our new node to point to what the head used to be and now we need to tell the head to be referenced to the new node, okay? So that's what this line is doing. 
after that, we have a link list and we have a capability where we can add new nodes to the front. All right, so let's go ahead and now make a quick method to allow you to print out your link list. So I'm gonna make a public void method and I'm gonna make one called print list. All it's going to do is it's gonna iterate through the entire list and print out the data within it. So I'm gonna use a while loop in this implementation and I'll probably just do it really quickly. So while, let's, let's actually make a temp pointer so we can make something that's a runner. Let's go to make a linked list node runner is equal to head. So now our runner is equal to the front of our linked list. And we're gonna say while the runner is not equal to null, we're gonna allow it to print out its data. You have to check that the current node is not null before you try to access the data within it. If that doesn't make sense, just run a few tests and debug and you will see that you're gonna get a null reference error if you don't do this check, all right? So now while the runner is not equal to null, we're gonna go ahead and print out its data. So we're gonna do a console.writeline runner.data. And the last thing we're gonna do is every time it prints out, we want it to move itself forward. So we're gonna say the runner is now equal to the runner.next. This is gonna move our runner pointer through our entire list of data, okay? So we have a really simple linked list implementation here. Let me zoom out so you guys can see the entire thing. What we've done is we've created a linked list node, really simple, it contains a piece of data and a reference to a next node. We created a constructor that takes in the new data you wanna put into that linked list node and then it creates it for you. We've created a linked list which contains a count and then it also contains a reference to the head node because a linked list is accessed by its head node, especially when you have a single linked list, which we're making right here. All right, we've defined a constructor to tell the head node to be initialized as a null and its count to zero. And then we've created a method to add nodes to the front of our linked list. What happens is we create a new node with the new data they wanna add we tell the new node to point to what the head was or currently is and then we tell the head to now point to our new node okay then we increment our counter to to uh, define that we've added something to our linked list lastly we made a print list method which is going to create a temporary reference to the head node okay it's creating basically a copy of it and now it's running through a while loop to iterate through the entire list and print out the data within it. Let's go ahead and, oh, did I forget? A bracket somewhere. It looks like I did. Oh, I'm missing one of my link list. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and create a linked list now in our main function. So let's go ahead and say linked list is equal to new. Let's just make sure I'm using my linked list. We are, okay. The reason I'm checking is the collections.generic library does contain an implementation of a linked list. That's a double linked list. I strongly recommend in most cases you just use the library implementation. It's generic and it's been kind of tested and proven to work. But uh, this is a great way to learn, and if you guys ever need to create a uh, optimized version of a linked list that's very particular to your use case, you can do it yourself. So now, again, let's go and create our linked list here in our main function, and let's go ahead and add a handful of nodes to it, all right? So I'm gonna add, let's say it's five, let's go with, let's just duplicate it a few times, uh, let's say a seven, a one, another five, a 10, a 15, and a four. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call linked list dot print. And what we should see is we should, we should see our linked list print out in order 
uh, in actually reverse order because remember when we add our first node the head will become five when we add the second node that inserts in front of our old node or the old head node so now you have seven as the head so it'll print out seven then five now we add a one that's going to go in the front so our next printout is going to be one seven five and onwards so if I run this right now, let's go ahead and put a breakpoint so we don't automatically close our console window. What we should see is 4, 15, 10, 5, 1, 7, 5, which is exactly what we see. So in that, I've shown you guys how to create a really simple linked list. This is a single linked list, and I've given you guys a add node to front method. I strongly recommend take this back, understand how a linked list works, and try to implement a few methods on your own. Some of the normal methods you'll see in a linked list are you need to be able to delete nodes. So you may want to make a delete from front node. You may want to also be able to delete nodes that exist in any position in the linked list. So that means in order to delete that node, you need to traverse the node until you find the node you need to remove. And then you need to repoint the prior node to the node after the one you're deleting. If you don't do that, you're going to break your linked list and then you can delete that memory from the linked list. Okay. Or delete that node from memory in C sharp garbage. The garbage collector will take care of it for you, but I definitely say you guys should give that a shot. Uh, you can also try to add uh, a method that allows you to add a node to the end of the list. And also one that allows you to add it to maybe the middle. All right, that covers linked list. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you have any questions, comments, critique, please do leave it in the comments down below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Have a good one, you guys.